Hello friends, I am Dr. Viral Harya, practicing anesthesiologist and pain physician since last 10 years. Today we are going to discuss an important topic that is trigeminal neuralgia. Let's first get down to what is trigeminal neuralgia and how the patients present to us. So basically these patients will have pain in the distribution of the trigeminal nerve which is the fifth cranial nerve and it supplies the face in these three regions. So basically ophthalmic or maxillary or mandibular region. So the patients will have pain in either the upper jaw or the lower jaw A few patients may have pain in the forehead or the eye. This pain is very sharp, very shooting and very lancinating pain. It comes to them as a shock or a current like sensation even on light touch or maybe just even when they try to speak. Sometimes these patients are even unable to shave their beard or brush their teeth because the pain intensity is so severe that they are afraid to touch the facial, uh, uh, any part of the face. Sometimes the pain gets aggravated by even a gush of air or a cold wind and this current like sensation makes them hold it completely and then slowly it subsides on its own. So they get this repeated attacks of pain. The problem with these patients is that very, actually very few doctors also know that how to diagnose trigeminal neuralgia. So these patients will go to the dentist for dental pain or to the ENT for ear pain and will keep on go visiting different doctors. A lot of patients who come to us come with uh, removal of teeth or dental treatment and still they have not subsided uh, the pain has not subsided so they report to us so these patients need to be seen either by a neurologist or a pain specialist and they need to be started on some medications and treatment so the first and foremost thing as its pain of trigeminal neuralgia is not continuous it's not dull aching but it is very sharp shooting and a shock like sensation which persists for some time and gradually resolves on its own. And this patient, some patients may get repeated attacks, sometimes multiple times during the day or sometimes they have a, a symptom free interval but then again will get start getting the painful attacks or shock like sensation. The pain will be uh, distributed. Uh, limited to the distribution of the trigeminal lobe basically that is the lower jaw or upper jaw and uh, either the forehead or the eye sometimes it just radiates to the posterior surface of the skull or the upper surface of the parietal region or temporal region that is because of the referred pain that they experience uh, where the nerve supplies these patients once the diagnosis of trigeminal neuralgia is confirmed we can put them on various medications. So these are basically anti-convulsants and neuropathic pain medications. So they help them to reduce the intensity of uh, sensitivity of the neurons in the trigeminal nerve and they help to reduce the pain. But the problem with these uh, medications is that they cause a lot of drowsiness, a lot of sleepiness. Uh, medications like carbamazepine which we regularly use for these patients they can cause some side effects like low blood counts and that is the reason when they need to either stop the medications or even if they are getting relief from pain with the medications they are unable to continue this medications further. That's where the role of an interventional pain physician comes in where we try to treat this pain by a radio frequency ablation of the trigeminal nerve. So important procedure that we can perform for these patients is radio frequency ablation of the gasserine ganglion or the trigeminal nerve ganglion. This uh, the trigeminal nerve arises from the foramen ovale and it divides into three parts to supply this ophthalmic, maxillary or mandibular division. So the our target is the foramen ovale which we try to identify under a fluoroscopic guidance basically under an x-ray image so if the patient is lying supine and if we rotate the uh, siam in certain degree we are able to uh, find out the position of the foramen oval we try to insert a needle in this foramen oval by various sh shoots of the x-ray and try to locate the exact position of the nerve 
in in the metal scale that is the trigeminal where is the trigeminal ganglion is located after that do a sensory stimulation and a motor stimulation and confirm our position of the needle of the radio frequency needle there after we give some local anesthesia and some sedation to the patient because this procedure is extremely painful so the nerve is ablated and the sensitivity of the nerve is completely reduced so this patient will then get complete relief and immediate relief from the pain the most rewarding part of the radio frequency trial ablation of a trigeminal nerve is that the patient can experience immediate pain relief even on table and that is a long lasting relief maybe some patients never need a repeat procedure sometimes some patients do experience a recurrence after 2 years or 3 years the same procedure can be repeated for for them and they can experience the relief again for maybe long years in their life so basically there are a lot of uh, discussions why the trigeminal neuralgia occurs what is the reason for it to happen so uh, the lot of patients have undergone mri and there is a uh, they they have found some vascular loop around the trigeminal nerve so that is the postulated mechanism that probably the pulsations from this vessel are causing a change in the myelin sheath of the nerve and that is why that nerve is more sensitive and uh, the patient experiences pain but it has not been seen in all the patients so there are many patients of trigeminal neuralgia who may have absolutely normal mri no vascular loop around the root entry zone of the trigeminal nerve certain patients who don't have severe pain or who have pain limited to a very restricted uh, region they can also get simple infraorbital nerve blocks or supraorbital and supratracheal nerve blocks so a limited region where we can use local anesthetics and we can use even alcohol and phenol and ablate the nerves for quite a good relief for a good duration of time do contact us in case you know of any patient or anybody who is suffering from orofacial pain the most important part in the in the treatment of a patient with orofacial pain is the diagnosis is establishing the diagnosis thank you for your patient listening